A radical treatment for depression is one step closer to being covered by Medicare, which will make it accessible to thousands of Australians, profoundly altering their quality of life. Around 1.5 million Australian adults suffer from depression and 30% don't respond to treatment, making it the most prominent mental health disorder in the country. Transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, which is drug-free and non-invasive, is being hailed as the greatest medical breakthrough for depression since Prozac. Psychiatrist Dr Ted Cassidy is championing TMS. He joins us now, along with patient Geoffrey O'Donnell, to talk to us all about this incredible treatment. If, if Dr Cassidy, if I can start with you, yep. TMS, it's, it's a non-invasive treatment and it's, it's yep. not even a drug. Can you explain how it works? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a completely non-invasive treatment and it used magnetic, uses magnetic pulses to directly activate positive mood pathways. So by doing that, it actually bypasses those other mechanisms that typically we use chemical sort of activation of those positive mood pathways. Uh, but, but by using the magnets, we're, we're sort of bypassing that chemical pathway. So for people who either don't respond to chemicals or have stopped responding to chemicals, uh, then, then this is a treatment that's very likely to work. We're calling it a breakthrough, but it's actually been around a while. You call TMS the new Prozac. How effective is it compared to other treatments? So, so, so the, the best thing about, so really simply put, about 70, 60 to 70 percent of people will have a more than 50 percent improvement in their symptoms, and about 40 percent of people will be in complete remission after treatment. Now we typically only see patients that have been on a minimum, have failed a minimum of two antidepressants. So those sort of, so if you're looking at patients that have been on multiple medications, TMS is at least twice, possibly three times as effective as further medication treatment. So it is a very effective treatment and it's also different. The reason I've kind of talked about it as the new Prozac is because Prozac was a, was a it changed the paradigm of treating mental illness in the late 80s when it came out. And, and since then, the last, my whole career as a psychiatrist, we've just seen a bunch of Me Too medications, you know, 20, 30 different medications that increase serotonin. Um, and, and, and unsurprisingly, if you've not responded to a couple of medications that in, increase serotonin, the chances of responding to the third, fourth, fifth are actually much lower. So TMS is actually just a completely different pathway. It's actually something new and different, and as you said, not so new. Uh, huh. And Jeffrey, you've, you've been using TMS. You've had depression for what, most of your life. Yeah. How's TMS helped you? When I was at my worst, um, I was almost incapable of speech. I was almost incapable of moving. I would wake in the morning with this dreadful sense of a weight upon me that I could not get rid of. Um, it was just appalling. When I look back on it, I'm just horrified. Um, but for me, TMS really has been a game changer. And now um, I'm much, much better off. Um, I don't wake up like that anymore. Um, and um, my mood is, is um, much, much improved upon what it was in those days. And I'm just so pleased about it. Well, what other treatments did you try? I think you said you had depression for 50 years. What did, what did you try? Um, I've also um, had talking therapies, and cognitive behavioural therapy is one of those. Um, and I've also been on a range of antidepressants. Um, cognitive behavioural therapy, in fact, is, is still very, very good. Um, and I still use it um, if, if I want to confront particular thoughts at particular times. I could kick straight in with CBT. Um, however, to raise my mood um, continuously over a long period of time, um, TMS has really has been the one that's done it for me. Sounds quite miraculous, is it? Oh, look, I think it is in a sense. Basically what you've got is a couple of magnets kind of pulsing a little bit there and, um, and, and a sense of lightness can overcome me. It's just, it's just terrific. On occasions, um, I've almost gone to sleep during the treatment. You sound like a new man. I hope so. <laughs> And Ted, uh, TMS, as you say, it's been around well since the since the 80s. It is quite common in other countries. Some countries, I know, in the US, they have actual TMS clinics. Why is it taking us so long to to adapt it here and to make it more mainstream? So really, it comes down to funding. That's what it comes down surprise, to. Surprise, surprise. So, so when I when I when we when a lot of patients come to us want treatment, and the ones that are suitable that we don't go ahead, 95% of the time they say, well, I can't afford it. So, so in the US they have a different funding mechanism and private health funds are allowed to fund it. In other overseas jurisdictions it was offered in, in their systems. In our system it was really a kind of Medicare had to 
put together the funding package and there really wasn't a, a single kind of pharmaceutical company uh, style organisation that was going to go out and get it funding. One of the things we did with TMS Australia, I recognise this very early, was we really started pioneering some of that funding. So I think Medicare, as you said in the beginning, is the, is the end game. But you know, there's probably, there's a whole bunch of health funds. We, we're involved in a pilot program with the Federal Department of Health, groups like veterans, workers' comp schemes, they will fund TMS because they see the benefit to, uh, to their, their clients and their, and, their, and their patients. As we say, we're closer than we've ever been though for, for yes. TMS to be recognised by Medicare. How far off do you think that is? Look, I, I think this, this, the hurdle that we've just passed has really been the critical hurdle. It's been basically getting the Department of Health and the experts to say there is not only is this an effective treatment, but there is, a, there is a clear health economic argument that we should have it on board. So I think we're going to see TMS probably by early 20-something that myself and Professor For Paul Fitzgerald have been working on, and, uh, and that's been fantastic. We've seen you know, impacts not only on people's depression symptoms, but we've seen significant reductions in their PTSD symptoms. So great sort of to see that sort of work. Yeah, and another, another case in point sitting here in Geoffrey. Geoffrey, what would it mean to you to see TMS more readily available so people can benefit like you have? Well, um, in, in a sense, I see myself as being a bit of a, a mental health advocate and I liaise with people who are working in communities to try to Im improve um, uh, mental health uh, in those communities. Um, given that we've got about a million and a half people each year who have got um, uh, depression, um, again, I see this as being a, a, a game changer for, for the community at large. And if we can pull those numbers down somewhat, it's the, the difference it's going to make to communities, especially in, re in regional areas, it's going to make a big difference to them, I'm sure. I've no doubt whatsoever. Oh, you're a wonderful advocate for mental health and for this uh, extraordinary procedure, so let's hope it's not too far off. Thank you both for coming in tonight. Thank you, Jacinda.